There we go. Good morning, everyone. Well, not everyone. Nobody's here yet. Good morning. Pretty quickly, people will start to come on. I hope, uh, welcome, if you're watching this later. I'm trying to fill in this, which used to just be a gap of me looking at the screen or doing something else. So welcome to Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions. It's a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan. I'm Tim Marvel, and I'm blessed to be the minister here at the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. We get together Monday through Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time live here on our Facebook page um, just to get the news of the church and to begin our day uh, reading through God's Word and uh, saying hello to everybody. Some people come and we have a great morning crew that comes and we starts their day with us. And in the chat box, they'll say hello and good morning and and uh, say if there's anything that's going on in their lives that they like to have the group pray for. And we do that at the end of devotions here. Some people just watch this afterwards, maybe at their lunch break or at a quieter time during the day for them. And some people finish their days by watching it. But whatever at all, it goes out and touches many, many people. And for that, it means it's a ministry. So we're very thankful for it. And we're thankful for each of you who have been led to this place today. I hope uh, you're doing well. Here on this Wednesday, June 28th, it is, a, um, it is an odd day here in Southeast Michigan because we have been inundated with the Canadian wildfire smoke. And um, last night, it was, uh, it was just very odd. I was out just before sunset and uh, man, just an odd, almost a yellowish, I'm colorblind, so don't take me on colors, but there was almost a thickness to the air and there was a, a smell of uh, burning plastic a little bit, right? So anyway, um, we are here. So let's see. Let's see some of the folks that have joined us today on this Wednesday. We're moving towards 4th of July. Judy Martin, hello. Paul Wolf, hello. And uh, my Aunt Mary is with us. Good morning down in Charlotte. And uh, Amy and Judy and Barry and Margot and Joan Riggs and Linda Wolf. Hello, hello. Kip is with us. Bob Ando, Larry and Carolyn. Ken Woods, happy, happy, Ken. Nancy is with us. I think I got that. These things jump around sometimes. So I miss Kevin and Chris Vaughn. And I think we're caught up there. So anyway, uh, we've got just a few more minutes to go. As I said, if you joined us here in the meantime, good morning. Welcome to this smoky Wednesday morning on, uh, of June 28th here. Where, how's the weather with you are? You know, uh, um, the whole state has been inundated with this smoke. And I know that they got it over on the west side before we did. And I remember on social media, my friends from over there saying, who's burning plastic? And then somebody said, no, that's the wildfire smoke. I'm like, I never heard wildfire smell like plastic burning. But sure enough, I think it does too. I noticed that. So be careful today. You know, if if you're young, we need to watch out for the very young and the very old. Uh, and the people that have asthma and other respiratory things, you know, be kind to yourself today. Maybe maybe just turn on that air conditioning, even though the temperature doesn't need it, and uh, and take it easy because uh, there's a lot of particulate out there. So minimize your time outside if you can, right? And they also say, you know, the, all those masks that we have after the pandemic, you can use them today because it would help with that, with the particulate. So if you are sensitive, think about that. All right, other news. It's Wednesday, so tonight we're going to have uh, the parents meeting. Every kid that gets uh, the privilege of going to Camp Wakanda, uh, needs to have forms filled out from parents and guardians. That's going on tonight. And uh, we, we've got some, need some more, need some more people to show up and do that. So they're going to have that opportunity. It'll be real easy. It'll be fun. So check out. And as always, if you want to know what's going on around the church, there's a couple ways. The first stop, go to our website, www.allenparkpres.org. And there you can see 
links to everything we do, including calendars, what's going on on a daily basis, hour by hour basis at the church. Um, links to all of our Facebook page and YouTube channel where all of our services and devotions um, are put up for later viewing if people need it. And um, there's also ways to get in contact with us. Our Facebook page, which most of you that I'm talking to are coming to you from, you know how to get here, but that we also tend to cross post stuff there on a more immediate nature. But if you do, uh, and the other thing is, is sign up for our email, right? It's easy enough to get on our email list. And then, and uh, you have choices there about stuff that you want to get and not get. Um, but uh, it's a good way because anything that we have going on, we'll send out a weekly email blast at a minimum. And if there's something really big going on or a need for the church, sometimes our ministries find themselves in immediate need, we'll get that out with an email blast. All right. Okay. Let's, oh, I got to move something here. Stepping on something. Oh, I just turned my, look. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting a little thin. <laughs> a little thin up there, huh? All right. Got to watch that. You guys see that all the time when we pray, probably. There we go in the Camp O'Connor group. 5.30 tonight. Got that. Very good. Carrie, thank you so much for putting this stuff up. And, uh, oh, there's a wait list on that seven night group. But Norma. All right. So we're going to move on at, since it is 9.04, a little late. We're going to move over to our devotions. So I always start this off with my breathing discipline slash exercise, right? I, uh, Breathe in for five, hold it for five, and then exhale for five. Just pushing aside the business of the day and the other things that are giving me concerns, just so we might just soak in God's word. And uh, if you'd like to accompany me, feel free. Here we go. All right, come more, Jesus. Come more, Jesus. All right, as we go over here to our daily lectionary readings, our first devotion is Psalm 15, and it's a short one today, right? We've had some short ones, and they're good. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. This is answered several times in Holy Scripture, right? What does the Lord desire, right? What, who's welcomed into his tent? And it says here, those who walk blamelessly, right? Do what is right and speak the truth from their heart. Who don't slander with their tongues and don't do evil to their friends. Who don't argue with their neighbors. Who recognized wicked and evil and despise it and work against it but they always honor the Lord. And when they say an oath, they stand by it. Good people, salt of the earth people, right? And we hear in other places, you know, that uh, what does the Lord uh, require, right? And it's oftentimes, um, you know, it just comes back to the same stuff, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind and your strength, right? And then to love your neighbor as yourself. All right, walk justly. We hear that too in Micah. Think about that. What would that look in your life if you walked justly? I'll tell you what it looks like in my life. This is just one example. Um, I used to laugh a lot, you know, just jokes, jokes that, you know, made fun of uh, stereotypes you know, you, or utilize stereotypes to make fun, and then you laugh, and then you realize, you know what, you say, that's kind of, that's making fun of somebody else. So, um, yeah, it's kind of changed my humor. I mean, everybody loves to laugh, and we know that we're joking, right? We don't mean it. Well, you know, we have to be careful. We have to be careful with that. So, I don't know. That's just one example. 
is uh, when I realized that when we were laughing at the expense of others, um, then, then I, I thought that of a different way. Anyway, not to say that there isn't lots of funny things that we'd laugh at together. Um, but let's move on. And uh, we're going to go, and we're reading Samuel. So uh, we've been working our way through this. And we heard the, the, where Samuel came from, the fact that he was a Nazarite. He was uh, dedicated to the Lord uh, from the time that he was weaned, right? Raised in the, wasn't a temple at the time, um, but it was the tent of meeting, uh, the tabernacle. Um, and um, so as they, uh, and as he rose in age and Israel continued on, he became much more than just a Nazarite. He was a, he was a, uh, a, he was raised in the priestly order and he became a prophet, right? Now we've heard about the Philistines. They stole the Ark of the Covenant and they had it and every, everybody got tumors and we heard about that yesterday, right? And, uh, but today we're going to hear more about the Ark. It's been back with the Israelites, right? And, um, and we're going to say, uh, well, we'll hear about it right here. So this is 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 2 through 17. From the day that the ark was lodged at Kirith Jerim, a long time passed, some 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. So I'm going to pause right there. What does that lament mean? It means a desiring, right? A recognizing that um, things weren't right that they needed to come back and you need you needed to come back to the lord so that's what the that's what this means when they say they're lamenting okay then samuel said to all the house of israel if you are returning to the lord with all your heart then put away the foreign gods and the astarts from among you i'm sorry that's our astartes astartes among you Direct your heart to the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So Israel put away the Baals and the Astartes, and they served the Lord only. I'm going to pause there. These are uh, other gods represented by idols. And again, the continuing problem that the nation of Israel has is that, um, you know, they, inter they, they intermingle with the other cultures that were there, and then they start to take on worship. Uh, in a joint manner, it's kind of, we call it uh, enculturation, right? Uh, so when cultures, you know, end up intermingling um, and not all for good, right? So they're saying, oh, we just don't feel like the Lord's been on our side. And then Samuel says, hey, if you're really serious about this, this is what you have to do. You got to put these other idols that you're worshiping away, right? Serve the Lord only. All right, then we're going to continue on. Then Samuel said, Gather all Israel at Mitzpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mitzpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord. They fasted that day and said, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the people of Israel at Mitzpah. No pause right there. So this is kind of like a little subplot. So Mitzpah um, in Hebrew means um, watchtower. And it represents, um, well, where, where do you see it? In, um, back in Genesis, um, who is that? Jacob and Laban. Um, they agree to, to part, right? And Jacob's going to get, you know, cattle. He's been working for Laban, trying to get his daughter. <laughs> so, and he's been taken advantage of. So they reach an agreement between them. And they actually pile stones and they say, let the Lord watch over between you and me, even when we're not here. This is the agreement. Let's do it. So Mitzpah uh, is this watchtower. So it's the, the pile of stones that was done. Then the Hebrew nation also used uh, piles of stones to represent uh, when wonderful things had been done, right? So if you go to a Jewish cemetery, you'll see that. And uh, Well, I'm, that's, I just... There's lots of good stuff about stones uh, and, and, the, and the Israeli culture. All right, so we know what mitzvah is, right? The watchtower. So this is also this is where Jacob and Laban would do it, but it stands for you know, this pile of stones. 
So they worshiped God and they and they 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 gave them an offering before them, right? They poured it out before the Lord, so um, they were cleaned and they fasted to prepare themselves. And then they admitted that they had separated themselves from God. And then Samuel, who was acting as a prophet and a priest, he judged. He, he judged the people. And, uh, and then forgiveness. So there's a period of time when that judgment goes through, and then, then there's restoration. So that restoration has occurred. Now we hear about the Philistines next. Here we go. The enemies of Israel. When the Philistines heard that the people of Israel had gathered at Mitzpah, uh, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the people of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The people of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us and pray that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. So Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel. And the Lord answered him. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to attack Israel. But the Lord thundered with a mighty voice that day against the Philistines and threw them into confusion. And they were routed before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mitzvah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as beyond beth -car. And Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mitzvah and Jeshana. And he named it Ebenezer. For he said, thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not again enter the territory of Israel. The hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. The towns that the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron to Gath. And Israel recovered their territory from the hand of the Philistines. There was peace also between Israel and the Amorites. So in this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So Samuel had risen to a very, very high level, right? He was the judge. There was no kings. So he was the judge when um, things, people had beasts against one another or what they should do. So here he's, not only is he judging for people, but he's judging the, the society too, saying this is what we have to do to, to return ourselves to God. He does. And then of course they get this tremendous victory on the battlefield against the Philistines, this threat. And then we hear about this other threat to them, which is this other culture, the Amorites, and then find out that there was peace between them. So pretty good time, I guess, right? Pretty good time. Ebenezer, stone of help, our helping stone. Sometimes they say it's stone of hope, but it's the stone of help, Ebenezer. Eben means stone in Hebrew. And then we have Ezer, right, which is help. All right. I just, I love some of these Old Testament stuff. I really do. And I didn't. I didn't for the longest time. I didn't understand it until, well, until I went to seminary and, and I had wonderful professors that told me the story, right? I never realized it as, a, as, a, as an ongoing story. All right, we'll move into the New Testament now. And we're going to read out of um, Acts of the Apostles. And we're in chapter 6. And we've already, um, we've already heard about the um, Pentecost. And the church, the early, early church is getting its feet under them, trying to figure out what are we supposed to do, because God said that we were supposed to do this together. And they're trying to figure out what to do, and they know that they're supposed to bring the good news of Jesus Christ, but there's also a growing number of people that's causing some concern. And these people are from all over, right? Remember, because they can now understand each other. And uh, so we're going to hear about uh, Hellenists, and we're going to hear about Hebrew. Now, the Hebrew people are the traditional Jews. The Hellenistic Jews are like the Greeks, right? And the Romans. Uh, so... Here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today out of Acts chapter 6. Now, during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. 
And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our parts, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timian, Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Pause right there. That's pretty significant because now they have Jewish, rab right? Jewish rabbis. Uh, the priestly order is starting to become following the way. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Syrians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not understand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stopped saying things against this holy place in the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw his face was like the face of an angel. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So much here. We're seeing here, um, this is the um, institution of deacons that are being put into the earliest church, right? And we have Stephen, and there's there's a specific uh, ministry that you can, that we have embraced at different times, but Stephen ministry. I know that we have some folks that have been trained in our church in Stephen ministries, and this is where it comes. We always say the deacons are the hands of Christ out there, and we can see where they come from because the disciples were saying, we've been put the, we've been put and told to go out and to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to bring this gospel, this good news of Jesus Christ throughout the world. Yet, we're spending more time wondering, dealing with these internal problems. How do we get enough food to feed people? And now there's a complaint amongst the people because one sect of people says that they're, that the widows of the other sect are getting preferential treatment and their, their widows are getting it. Remember, we're always told, take care of the widows and the orphans. So it had to get done. They couldn't ignore it. So they, they instituted this of uh, seven men of good standing, led by Stephen. Now, Stephen gets into a problem because he gets picked on by the synagogue. And again, it's the same um, things that are being uh, brought up to uh, against Stephen as they have for the other ones, is that they have blasphemy against the temple, against God, and against the law of Moses. Now, that's really false charges, right? Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to uh, to embody the law, right? So... And then, so they they put these charges against him, and there's a very, very long soliloquy that comes after this. I don't know if we get to all of it tomorrow or not. We'll have to see. But um, Stephen, um, his face is like an angel. Remember that this happened to Moses. Um, it, you know, it just, his, their faces glow, glowed. And, uh, so he's going to say some amazing things here, things that he probably couldn't say himself alone but he can with the Holy Spirit because he's given courage and he's been given the words. We need to remember that that also happens to us too as believers. All right, let's move on to Luke. Our gospel reading is out of Luke in the 22nd chapter. We're going to hear the Last Supper here, right? And uh, Luke has got it here and, and Jesus is leading it. And um, so 
The Passover supper is a Seder, um, and there's a lot of tradition with it. Um, we some some churches, and I know that we've done this at Allen Park. Bob Morton, you know, had done a lot of work on it. In fact, I have his program here, where you can make it into a Seder-like experience. They call it a Christian Seder, which really is an oxymoron. But to understand the tradition of it and the fact that there's readings and there's specific readings uh, that give thanks for the way that God had moved and brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt, right? So um, they would be ready for this. This is something that, it, that from the very, very earliest uh, days of their lives, this was something that was observed and they knew the traditions. And Jesus sits down to and to have this traditional dinner with them. But he changes it a bit. So let's listen for the word of the Lord here for us today. When the hour came, he, Jesus, took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> and he did the same with the cup after the supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to the one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. So in this reading of the word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. These are the words of institution that we still use today. And in fact, uh, next Sunday, July 2nd, is a communion day, and we're going to do it. Uh, we've been doing, you know, the sealed uh, communion kits, uh, shots and dots, as we call them. And uh, we know that that's less than full, but we're going to actually do um, communion. And it, it'll be people can come forward, the bread will be pre cut, and there'll also be cups for you to take of juice. Um, and um, so people are going to be coming forward. That's a little bit different than the way that we've been doing it. Do it for two reasons. Number one, it's safer to do it now than it has been. But the other thing is, is that, you know, those shots and dots, um, they're expensive. <laughs> and it's not so much the expense, but we're getting down in them. So once we, ex once we had depleted the inventory, we said, well, we're going to go back. And everything's worked out here. So come to church. Come to church on July 2nd. And we'll also sing a little bit of some more patriotic-themed uh, hymns, anyway. But look forward to, to seeing you here. But these are the words of institution when we do communion, right? And uh, I, I say these words uh, every time that we have them as we, as we prep for it. And uh, ancient traditions continue to be recognized. But, you know, sometimes with tradition... Um, we lose sight of why we do it. So I want you to th maybe just offer that up for you to think about. When we come to the table of communion, right, what are we coming? Are we coming for ourselves, for the forgiveness? Yes, we do that. But do we, are we also coming because we are participating in this sacrament, this thing that allows us to share the holy with God and with, our, with each other, um, and, 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 and to recognize that, right? Because it's also an, it's an article of faith to do it, right? To come to the table and to accept that whatever God gives is, is sufficient for us. Um, so, and that, that shows, demonstrates our trust also. So it's a very holy time and, and uh, it gives us time to do it. Now I know, I have, uh, I can remember one conversation I had with somebody. I was visiting another church and I got to know, um, one of the people there, they, they invited us and our boys at the time over to their house, their farmhouse, where they had a, like a youth get together for the church. It was very enjoyable, but I remember having the opportunity to sit and talk with him. 
we had been at church that day, his church, and they had served communion. And he said, you know, um, I, uh, I, I didn't take communion today because I just felt that I didn't deserve it. And, uh, this was a, this was a, a evangelical covenant church. And I remember saying to him, well, that's why, isn't that why we take one of the reasons why we take communion, right? To determine that we are worthy for it, to ask for that forgiveness, to to live into the into the abundant life that Jesus has given, and also the ordered life that Jesus calls us. And he looks at me and he goes, "Well, I need. Where were you at eleven o'clock this morning when I needed you?" Right? I would never encourage anybody to deny themselves because they don't think that they're worthy. Right? Just come to the table, you know, ask for that forgiveness, and come to the table with that open heart, and uh, and you will be fed spiritually and emotionally and physically. I hope, anyway, that's some of the my feelings about it. Let's go back over here. And uh, let's see, we've got some people that showed up here. Hi, Judy Sutherland, Helen England, good morning. Bob Ando is with us. I think I said, hi, Sue Tucker. Gary, thank you for putting up these readings today ancient words. All right. Well, we are here. We need to continue to pray for Jeff and uh, for his treatments, strength for him. Continue to pray for the people that we prayed for that continue to, to uh, just live into not only the good, but also some of the bad times that we have. So we want to lift up Don and we want to lift up Chuck uh, and Jeff, all um, as they as they progress through things, you know. Sometimes we go to the doctor, and um, you know they were fixed immediately, or you know, like stitches were kind of fixed immediately. Sometimes, you know, we're given something, and within three to five days we feel better. And then sometimes that you know it just takes us a long time, and those folks are going through long term things. So, um, and it's it's easy to say we care, but you know things wear down on you. So it's people that are under long-term stuff we want to lift up. Okay, Because I, I know that feeling now. I know that feeling. But let's pray. Heavenly Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the words that you gave us, the technology that you give us. Lord, we thank you just for the opportunity to read your words together, to understand that when uh, many uh, that uh, are together, that this becomes a worship experience. And so we do give you this thanks. But we also uh, come to you newly refreshed with continuing uh, thoughts of others who are ill, and we want to lift up all who are ill. We specifically want to lift up Jeff and Chuck and Don, all others who are in need of wholeness and healing. Lord, you know. You know what is on our mind even before it comes to our lips. And we have heard today about your call to us to believe in you and you alone. So, Lord, lead us today so that we might be able to do that. And in doing that, we will prove to ourselves that it, we are worthy, but also we might act as a sh bright and shining light in this world where somebody is suffering. Somebody is looking for that light. So, Lord, we might be part of them coming to know you. And for that, we would be honored. So, Lord, bless us, all who are traveling as we approach this uh, holiday weekend that uh, will be extended out. We just uh, pray safety. And we, play, we do pray that there can be celebration of the freedoms that we have in this country and that we continue to uh, wholeheartedly embrace and lift, but that at the same time, uh, that people will be safe. And we do ask all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Very good. We, um, I love you. God loves you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. If there's anything that we can do, right, let us know. Let us know. I'll be back here with you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock for our last, our last, daily news and uh, devotions for this week and also for next week because I'm on vacation. 
So as a match of the world, much of the country would be anyway. So we're going to grab those, uh, those days and uh, go out, have a great time. And, but remember, this isn't the last thing that we're going to produce this week because we have the Good News Live with Suzanne Maxey and Carrie Van, and they are going to have at least one and hopefully more of our mission workers from Pikeville uh, that they'll be interviewing. So that's on Friday morning at 9 o'clock. And then, of course, we do have our Sunday worship that we'll always, always be putting live out on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So there we go. God bless. Have a great day in the Lord. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.